Hi guys, so today I'm really excited to be making a video about His Dark Materials, which is a trilogy by Philip Pullman, which is in the public eye once again 20 years after its publication, because there is a new book in the universe called The Book of Dust that's just been released earlier this week. I've already made a video talking specifically about Northern Lights, the first book in the trilogy, and I will link it above and also down in the description below. So if you've not read the trilogy, I would recommend you watch that one rather than this one because I will be talking about spoilers for the entire trilogy in this video. This is one of my absolute favourite book series. I was just enthralled by them as a child and reading them again now as an adult gives me such a deeper appreciation of its engagement with more intellectual themes and I've been so excited for this new book, The Book of Dust, for such a long time that I just wanted to have a bit of a discussion about why I really like His Dark Materials so much and talk about some of the themes that I enjoy particularly. I read an interview with Philip Pullman last week in which he said he doesn't do literature, he does story. And I thought that was a really good way of summarising his sort of intentions in this trilogy. They're really plot driven, which makes them great for kids. They're really, really compelling. But equally for adults, they have enough substance in them to be equally interesting. It's not literary in any type of pretentious way, but it is still very intellectual in a readable kind of way. And I think that's what makes it really special. So in this video I want to talk about some of the themes that I found most interesting in these novels, specifically religion, family and growing up. The second book in the trilogy, The Subtle Knife, introduces the character of Will, who is a delightful character and he's the perfect counterpoint to Lyra. He's from a different world to Lyra, one more like ours because he has his demon hidden away inside him, not visible to the outer world. And while Lyra is spontaneous and impulsive, Will is naturally more rational and cautious. They balance each other out perfectly and it makes you see a side to Lyra that you didn't really see in the first book. You can see how much of a restricted childhood she had. She never really had love or care and it means she has a diminished sense of personal responsibility, like she doesn't really understand the concept of paying for things. She's also quite emotionally stunted and that's unsurprising and not really her fault, but you can definitely see it in contrast with Will. I think you see this kind of doubling of characters throughout the trilogy uh, with other characters like Mrs Coulter and Lord Asriel and Yorick Bernison in Euphra Rackneson and I think it allows the novels to kind of explore dichotomies of differing morality systems and also just different personalities. Self-identity is so important for the characters in this novel, particularly the children characters who are still trying to figure out who they are and who they want to become. And I think for most children, this is made easier by the fact they generally have parents or at least a parental figure who will guide them and help them become the person they want to be. But for both Will and Lyra, these figures are absent in their lives. Lyra, as I talked about a bit more in my video about Northern Lights, doesn't know her parents at the start of the trilogy, but when she discovers that they are Lord Asriel and Mrs Coulter, she's sorely disappointed because they are neither caring nor kind towards her in any way. Although Mrs Coulter does undergo somewhat of a redemption in the latter half of the last book, she still fails to show Lyra any real love and she desperately desires that. Will's mother is physically present when he introduces a character at the start of The Subtle Knife, but she's mentally absent due to mental illness. It suggests that she has obsessive compulsive disorder and he is left to be her carer, which puts enormous pressure on him as a young boy. His hopes ride in the story he's told about his father, who was an Arctic explorer and a hero, and he wishes to live up to his legacy. And this has echoes of Philip Pullman's own experiences because his father died when he was seven and he was an RAF pilot and Philip Pullman was led to believe he died heroically but it later turned out the situations surrounding his death maybe weren't so clear cut. You can imagine this was a real blow to Philip Pullman's memory of his father and these ideas of parental figures infiltrate his novels greatly. Will does finally meet his father but at the moment of recognition between them, his father is killed. I think the books are trying to discourage relying on your parents to build this sense of self-identity, and I think it shows it can be done because by the end of the novels, both Lyra and Will have developed into self-assured and complete individuals. What struck me most when rereading the novels is how explicit the allusions to religion are. Right at the beginning of The Subtle Knife, the second novel, 
it goes into quite a lot of detail about the abject cruelty of the magisterium, which is a thinly veiled reference to the Catholic Church. It talks about the process of intercision, the horrific experiments conducted on children to separate them from their demon, and when this was described in Northern Lights, the way it was described reminded me a lot of female genital mutilation, and I thought, I'm just being really bleak or morbid, but actually it does make references to that in The Subtle Knife. It references directly forcible surgery conducted on children to inhibit their sexual function. And one of the witches, Ruta Skadi, um, says, That is what the church does, and every church is the same. Control, destroy, obliterate every good feeling. So if a war comes and the church is on one side of it, we must be on the other, no matter what strange allies we find ourselves bound to. This is an extraordinarily bold statement in a children's book, and I know Philip Pullman has uh, commented that Harry Potter got a really tough time for depicting magic and witches, whereas he got off relatively scot-free for a trilogy that is, at its core, about killing God. You can't talk about religion in these novels without mentioning John Milton. William Blake famously said that Milton was of the devil's party without knowing it. In Milton's Paradise Lost, Satan comes across as the hero of the poem, really, while God appears spiteful and vengeful. Paradise Lost is, of course, about the fall, the expulsion of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden because they lose innocence and they gain knowledge. And it's this acquisition of knowledge that is also at the heart of this trilogy, and there's a perfect conduit to this gaining of knowledge through the alethiometer. This truth-telling device allows Lyra to gain knowledge that she as a child would not otherwise have access to, but she loses her natural ability to read the compass-like device once she gains experience. Will and Lyra are clearly the Adam and Eve of this story, and there is a very direct rendering of the fall in a scene that involves them eating fruit together and realising that they have feelings for one another that go beyond friendship. The idea of childhood as inherently innocent is one that stems from romantic poetry such as that of Wordsworth and also philosophers like Rousseau, but Pullman rejects this conception of childhood innocence as he thinks it puts unrealistic expectations on children. Lyra, even at the start of Northern Lights, isn't innocent in an angelic sort of way, she's wild, and she's maybe innocent in the sense that she's free from the worries and responsibilities of adulthood, but she doesn't have that innate sense of morality that innocence and childhood are expected to have. She can be sometimes mean and spiteful, as children are. The transition from nun to theoretical physicist of Mary Malone, I think, is one of the most fascinating parts of this trilogy. And it, it again shows the oppression of religious institutions against romantic relationships, which are seen as impure, but are in fact as natural as it gets. The fall is figured in his dark materials as something totally natural, not shameful in the least. It's about knowledge and self-discovery, and it's not about becoming immoral, but about learning the differences between morality and immorality, and that the choice is yours. Lyra asks Mary if she stopped believing in good and evil when she stopped being a nun, and I thought Mary's response was really insightful. She said, no but I stopped believing there was a power of good and a power of evil that were outside us, and I came to believe that good and evil are names for what people do, not for what they are." I really like that idea, and I think it's about autonomy of the self, and not being ruled by any institution or organisation, whether religious or otherwise, and I really thought when I was reading these novels that that idea is at the heart of them. Another allusion that's impossible to overlook when reading these novels is that to The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. I mean, the novel pretty much starts with Lyra inside a wardrobe, so it's pretty explicit, but the allusions do continue throughout the three books. The world in this novel is really an anti-Narnia. It strives towards a kind of secular environment rather than the religious haven that is C.S. Lewis's Narnia. And uh, Philip Pullman is not a great fan of C.S. Lewis, it has to be said, and he called his work one of the most poisonous and ugly things I've ever read. As well as claiming that C.S. Lewis's work is misogynist and racist, he also argues against its conception of innocence, uh, because he believes that C.S. Lewis's work champions innocence as 
something to be always strived towards and that children should never lose this because then they become tainted. To Pullman, growing up is something that ought to be celebrated and the loss of innocence is not really a loss at all, it's just a gaining of new knowledge and new experiences and that's got to be a good thing. I think it comes across that I really subscribe to Pullman's way of viewing the world but I think even if you don't, these novels are just amazing pieces of literature and they can be enjoyed by almost anyone at any age. It's one of those rare instances of books that just do everything. They're amazing stories, they're real characters that have real flaws and that progress as the novels develop and they deal with some really profound themes that make you think as an adult more than you could really as a child reading them. I think they're absolutely fabulous and I cannot wait to start The Book of Dust, which I'm going to start today. And I have such high hopes for it and I fully expect them to be met by the genius that is Philip Pullman. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found my ideas interesting and I'd really like to have a discussion with you about how you feel about them and if you feel like you got more out of them reading them as an adult if you have than you did when you read them first. You can definitely expect a video about the Book of Dust once I've read it, which I'm sure will not be very long. So I look forward to seeing you then, but for now, bye bye.